How's it going everybody? My name is Mike Montgomery and welcome to my laundry room. And in today's video, we're gonna be replacing this old vinyl flooring with large format tiles on modern builds. So welcome to my laundry room. It's a back porch add-on and the only thing left on it that needs renovated is the floor. Not long ago, my friend Rachel Metz did a full makeover on this space, including this really cool mural on the ceiling. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. I started this project by taking out the old washer and dryer, which I'm gonna be replacing and removing the baseboard trim. And pro tip, be sure to use a utility knife to score between painted trim and your wall. That way you don't peel the paint with the trim. And now I've got to make the decision on whether or not I want to peel up this vinyl flooring and scrape the old adhesive off of the concrete foundation before applying my cork underlayment. Now this vinyl floor is adhered really well, so I don't see any reason not to go ahead and make sure that these are cleaned up really well and then roll out and install my cork underlayment directly on top of this. This will save a ton of time and energy, plus the vinyl floor can act as a waterproofing membrane. This cork cut really easily with a sharp blade in my utility knife. I just became familiar with this product. It's sustainable and it does a good job of insulating against sound. You can also pick this up in sheets and you see me here cutting each piece in half so it was just a little more manageable. I had no idea but they make adhesive specific for cork underlayment and the directions called for a 1 16th inch square notch trowel. This stuff spreads really easy and I found that it's actually better not to apply this stuff too thick. It tacks really well if it's just got a medium amount, so don't force it one way or another. Then I used a seam roller to knock out the air bubbles. Well, if you're wondering how I figured out not to apply too much adhesive, it was on this second piece. I plopped down way too much and I ended up getting a little bit of squeeze out, so make sure and avoid that. I mentioned it earlier, but you can also get cork underlayment in two foot by four foot and four foot by four foot pieces. I think this would be a little bit easier if it was a one person installation. The cork is actually a little bit brittle around the corners. Plus having pieces this big was just, well, not that convenient. I've seen this tool called a seam roller and a J roller. Whenever you use it, try and work from the center out. That way you work the air pockets to the edge. And after I gave everything plenty of time to cure, I came back and applied underlayment seam tape where all of the cork met. And now it's time to tile, and I'm gonna be using this 12 by 24 inch large format tile made by Marazzi. This is a part of their Epic Clean line, and I really like this matte finish. Plus, you can pick them up from today's sponsor, Home Depot. I'll make sure and leave links to everything that I'm using down in the description, along with this professional large format tile mortar and the half inch square notch trowel to apply it. Now I've already double checked my room for square and marked a line where I wanna start my first row of tiles. And after that, I just laid out that first row to see how everything would look. And I'm starting in this corner of the room so that I'll have as many full tiles as possible. I'm gonna have longer units on the opposite wall so you'll never see where those cut tiles end. Anytime you're mixing thin set or grout, make sure and follow the directions and it'll probably call to let it set for about 10 minutes and stiffen up. You can see here that I used a touch too much water, but as I continued to work, it ended up being a really good consistency. On each of these tiles, I'm gonna be doing a technique called back buttering, which is applying a layer of the thin set to the back of the tile to maximize the adhesive contact between the floor and your tiles. This is not 100% necessary, but considering my floors are not absolutely perfect and these tiles are really large, I wanna make sure that I really get a strong bond without any air pockets. And even though it takes a little more time, it's definitely reassuring. In between each of the tiles, I use these wedge spacers and levelers, which I'll be talking more about later on. But first, I need to talk about cutting holes in tiles. I picked up this diamond hole saw from Home Depot with this water reservoir that allows you to cut really cleanly through pretty much any tile. Now I did have an odd shape that I needed to cut, so I also used a diamond blade on my angle grinder which worked really well. I used the blade to cut the majority of it and then the bit to clean up all the edges. 
And aside from those holes in the last tile, the only cuts I need to make are straight cuts. So instead of renting a tile saw from Home Depot, I picked up a tile cutter. This is a really cool tool. Once you line your tile up where you want it to be cut, you just score a line using the scoring wheel and then snap your tile on that straight line. That's always so stressful, but it's super clean. This tile cutter is made by a company called Ruby and I also got it from Home Depot. It costs 115 bucks and can cut up to a 26 inch tile. I installed this pieces the same as all the others. I really made sure to back butter these well because this is where the washer and dryer are gonna sit. So I wanna make sure these definitely don't crack. After my first row was complete, I could double check that that first line was straight. Then I had a reference edge and I could move much quicker from there on out. If you apply thin set to the back of your tile, you're probably gonna get more squeeze out, but I definitely think a little extra cleanup is worth it in this situation. So if you haven't seen my house tour video, I'll leave a link down below. The reason I bring it up is because this laundry room used to be a back porch. It was closed in before I bought it. Now the concrete is pretty level, but it is not perfect. That's why I'm spending as much time back buttering as I am. I wanna make sure I get really good adhesion, like 90% on these tiles. And just for proof, I would call that good contact. This leveling system is pretty decent, but I did not buy the thing that makes it easier to slide these wedges in without messing up. And that has happened a couple of times. So I would recommend buying this. It's basically a tool just to make this whole process as simple as possible. Aside from that, I do approve of these spacers and levelers. The wedges help keep all of the corners as good as possible considering my floors aren't perfect like I mentioned. I think this is my third time doing large format tiles and so far so good, so let's keep moving. I'm using these tiles in my laundry room because they're a part of Mirazi's new antibacterial line of tile called Epic Clean. With over 99% antimicrobial protection, these defend around the clock against bacteria for the life of the tile for enhanced cleanliness. This plywood corner had construction adhesive attaching it to the wall so I used a wooden spacer and a multi-tool bit to cut away a piece so that I could fit the tile underneath this plywood. Before installing them, I did a batch cut on my final row and it was cool breaking these 24 inch long pieces. That is so cool. I didn't want to work myself into a corner, so I started from each corner working towards the door. You may have noticed, but I kept a roll of paper towels with me and I used that to clean up a lot of that thin set as I went before it dried. And I was happy to see how perfect all of my grout lines were when I put that final tile in. So now we're just gonna let this cure overnight, then I'll come back and knock all of these spacers and levelers loose. A wet sponge does a great job of cleaning up any of the thin set left over on the face of the tiles, and you can use what's called a grout saw that has this diamond edge on it to clean up any of the mortar in the grout lines. One of the benefits of large format tiles is you don't have a ton of grout lines, but if you do, you can always pick up a multi-tool attachment that can whiz through this. My grout lines are an eighth inch wide, so I'm using sanded grout. This is standard or typical stuff, and the color I'm using is called DeLorean Gray. And typically, you would use what's called a grout float to spread your grout out, push it into the cracks, and then squeegee your tiles clean. But today, I am excited because I am using what's called a grout bag, which is essentially a cake decorating tool for concrete, to squeeze the grout into the cracks of these large format tiles without making so much of a mess. In principle, I really liked the idea of using this tool, but I think I mixed my grout a little bit too thick because my forearms really started to get tired just after a few minutes. All right, cut the music. I'm not a huge fan of the grout bag. I feel like I could move quicker doing what I'm used to, which is just pulling the grout out of the bucket using the float. Let's give it a try. As I used the grout float to work everything into the cracks, I found that I really ended up making a mess anyways, so pulling the grout from the bucket and applying it the traditional way didn't end up wasting too much time or making much more of a mess. Once you've got all of your grout applied, you wanna come back with two buckets of water and some sponges to clean everything up. 
It's best to work in circular motions and always rinse that dirty sponge into the same bucket and pull clean water to clean with. And just like before, I kept some paper towels with me and that helped. Finally, once things are cured, you can come back with a cheesecloth to remove any haze if you've got some left over and your installation is done. So there you have it. Even though this installation isn't 100% perfect, I am really excited with how it came out and I think it takes this laundry room to the next level. I think this tile by Marazzi looks amazing and I also did a custom backsplash and I'll be sure to leave a link to that video below. And finally, I could get this room usable by installing my new washer and dryer, compliments also of the Home Depot. These were delivered right to my door and installation was really easy. All I needed to do was add a quick conversion kit to convert this from natural gas to propane, which is what my house runs on. This is the nozzle for natural gas. And then this is the one for propane. I guess propane burns hotter, so it uses less fuel. So let's put this one on. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous when I realized I needed to pop the hood and disassemble this dryer, but it was actually a really easy swap and I watched a couple YouTube videos that helped along the way. Once everything else was hooked up, I could run a test cycle and I was pleased to see that it worked perfectly. So thanks a ton for watching and I really hope you enjoyed today's video. One more huge thanks to the Home Depot for supplying the floor tiles, the backsplash, the laundry units, everything for this room. I got a couple more projects in here, including a sink over here and a cool ironing board storage solution on this wall. So make sure and click subscribe and we will see you next time on Modern Builds.